Imagine our world ravaged by hurricane force winds. With temperatures swinging from scorching heat to freezing cold. The day lasts just six hours in a world where only primitive life forms will ever evolve. This could be planet Earth if it had no moon. The moon is an 81 million billion ton lump of rock and dust, almost three and a half thousand kilometers in diameter, orbiting 400,000 kilometers above our heads. It's the second brightest object in our skies, with temperatures ranging from 120 degrees Celsius to less than minus 230 degrees. Its gravity is a sixth of that of the Earth. It has mountains that soar to almost 5,000 meters, and millions of craters litter the dust-dry surface where no liquid water has ever been found. This is not a hospitable place. And yet we often associate the moon with romance and mystery. The man in the moon enraptures people all over the world and feeds our hunger for supernatural myths and legends. We are far from alone in having a moon. There are at least 135 other moons orbiting the planets in our solar system. Saturn has the most with 46. But there are at least 10 mysterious bodies orbiting our planet. Five are asteroids temporarily caught by the Earth's gravitational field. And four are probably remnants of the Apollo 12 rocket. The tenth and largest is our moon. Since long before the birth of humankind, the moon has been the Earth's constant companion. But until relatively recently, we've known little about its true nature, or even how it was created. Scientists explored several competing theories. One suggested that the moon was an asteroid or planet trapped by the Earth's gravity. Another ascribed its creation to a giant impact on Earth, which ejected masses of material that formed the moon. Clues as to which theory was more likely to be correct came when man first landed on the moon and began to unlock the secrets of creation that were buried within its lunar rocks. Five, four, three, two, one. Zero, lift off. I'm going to step off the land now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Between 1969 and 1972, six missions blasted off to the moon. Wow, what a place! What a view, isn't it, John? It's absolutely unreal. Only 12 humans have ever walked on the moon. But these astronauts did more than just rewrite history. They also returned with samples of lunar rock. These moon rocks were amazingly similar to Earth rocks, but they contained far less iron. And this seemingly small difference offered a huge clue as to how the moon was created. It showed that the moon started with a bang. Four and a half billion years ago, the moon did not yet exist. The inner solar system had about twice as many planets as the four that exist today. But many of them were on a crash course to destruction. Among them was a planet about half the size of Earth, since named Thea, who in Greek mythology was the goddess mother of the moon. And it was on a collision course with our planet. Thea rushed closer and closer to Earth. The 
approaching planet would have been a terrifying sight. Astrophysicist Jeff Taylor has studied the moon's fiery birth and describes the view from Earth as Thea raced towards it. It might have started looking like a star or a pretty big star, but then as it got closer and closer, this thing would get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it just filled the sky moments before the big impact. And then everything would be, would be gone for you as a witness and there would be a giant flash because everything would be white hot. And if you were standing, or a friend of yours, on the other side of the Earth, they would see the flash in the atmosphere and, and feel gigantic earthquakes passing through the Earth. Thea was six and a half thousand kilometers in diameter. To put that into context, the meteorite thought to have wiped out the dinosaurs was about 10 kilometers across. And Thea was traveling at 40,000 kilometers per hour. This is an object that is the size of Mars, which is about half of the Earth's diameter. So it's a gigantic event of unimaginable power. As the planets got closer, their immense gravitational fields ripped each other's outer layers to pieces. Then they catastrophically collided. The impact was equivalent to billions of megaton bombs. It sheared off continent-sized sections of the Earth's crust and blasted surface rocks out into space. These surface rocks contained only a small amount of iron. The atmosphere around the molten planet was filled with rock vapor. Earth's gravity pulled back most of the debris, but some was catapulted into space, although it couldn't escape completely. Instead, it was trapped by the Earth's gravity, forming a ring of red-hot dust and rock around the planet. In a process called accretion, the circling dust and rocks collided and fused with other fragments to create larger blocks. We can represent this process by olive oil and water. The water here represents the space around the Earth, and the olive oil is the, the debris thrown around the Earth by this giant impact. And each little droplet that we pour in here represents a given chunk of matter thrown up, blasted off the Earth. We're going to stir this around, indicating the way the debris is being moved around the Earth. When Taylor stopped stirring, the drops bump into each other and clump together as bigger droplets. And that process of small things bumping into each other, becoming larger, is called accretion. And that's how the moon formed around the Earth. That's how the Earth formed around the sun. As the debris clumped together, its combined gravity became strong enough to attract even more debris. This chain reaction didn't stop until the billions of fragments of vaporized rock had gathered into one red-hot ball of matter. In less than a hundred years, this cooled, becoming a solid lump of rock, one-fiftieth the volume of Earth. It became the moon. When the moon formed, it was just 27,000 kilometers away but it didn't stay as close as that. Its violent birth set it spinning away from us on a journey that would last for 10 billion years. Absolute proof that the moon is moving away came in 1969, when astronauts left a 45 centimeter reflective plate on the moon's surface. By bouncing lasers off this plate, scientists can pinpoint the moon's distance from Earth to within a few centimeters. Such calculations reveal that the moon is moving away from the Earth at a rate of about four centimeters per year. So why is the moon on the move? <laughs> 